This video is brought to you by Be Quiet, makers of the new Dark Base 700 mid tower chassis, featuring a tempered glass side panel, front RGB illumination, and full length power supply cover to keep your build looking clean in 2018. Click the link in the description below to learn more. Hey, what's up guys, Joker here. Today we've got another tech news video as a follow up to what we talked about yesterday with the Intel kernel bug that was recently discovered and well actually it was discovered quite a while ago, but it's just become public in the press and a lot of people have been talking about it in the last 48 hours. So we've got an update on that and also a follow up on the DirectX 9 crashing issue that was introduced with the AMD Adrenaline drivers for Radeon graphics cards last month. But we're gonna start off with the Intel kernel bug issue, which is a very hot topic right now. So just a very brief recap. This is a bug that has been discovered that is going to impact a lot of CPUs in the market, ARM CPUs, Intel CPUs. Some people are speculating that it could actually affect AMD CPUs as well, although AMD has been quick to deny those claims. This bug is a potential huge exploit for pretty much anyone using an Intel CPU since the year 2011, which could leave you vulnerable to attacks known as Meltdown and Spectre. If you want full info on those attacks and what they could mean to your system and how maybe you could possibly detect them, I'll leave a link over to Meltdown Attack down in the description below. But basically, this is leaving a lot of Intel users vulnerable to these types of attacks. However, we have already seen a software patch issued by Microsoft via the Windows update. So if you got the recent Windows update, I got mine yesterday on all of the computers in my house. So I feel pretty safe, at least as far as the software side is concerned, but we still need to get a firmware update from Intel. And now we do know that Intel is planning to release a patch via a firmware update by the end, in the next five days for 90% of Intel CPUs released in the last five years. So that should be coming by the end of the week for anyone using an Intel CPU from the last five years, which is a very good thing. The um, it's a current patch that's been pushed out by Microsoft. If you got that, you're probably not going to see much of a performance impact. The reason is that this is a hardware issue, not a software issue. So we need to see this firmware patch before we do any testing, which is why I've held off on doing my testing right now, because any testing done at this time, just based on the software patch from Microsoft would just be completely premature and would likely show no change whatsoever, which is why some of the outlets that have already done some initial testing have saw no results because, well, the patch hasn't done anything that would affect performance. We need to get this firmware patch first from Intel. As Intel has stated in their press release, they said by the end of next week, Intel expects to have issued updates for more than 90% of processor products introduced within the past five years. In addition, many operating system vendors, public cloud service providers, device manufacturers, and others have indicated that they have already updated their products and services. So these patches are coming and we should see it, like I said, by the end of the week. And a couple of the big big outlets out there, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, and Google, as we could see here over on WCCF Tech, have already issued some initial statements where they have pretty much all collectively said that they are not seeing a significant performance impact with this update. It's really just negl negligible on the performance, but obviously once we get it for our desktop PCs, I will wanna take it through the full gambit of tests and run some desktop operations as well as gaming before and after the firmware update to see if there is any actual impact that could affect us as PC gamers. And if you do wanna keep an eye on when the update will be available, if you go over to the Intel Download Center, you can check for your processor and your operating system. I know that the microcode files had already been released for Linux back in November, which should have addressed this issue, but we are waiting for it on Windows system. As of this time right now for my i7-6800K, there's been no firmware update, but we should see this by the end of the week. Our next news story, as I said, is concerning AMD and their adrenaline drivers, which had introduced some crashing issues for DirectX 9 titles, which just a few days ago, Hexus had actually reported that the DX9 issue is like unlikely to be fixed, but now it looks like it is actually going to be fixed as AMD has pushed out a alpha driver to address this problem. Some of the games that they mentioned over on Hex is being affected are many of the Command and Conquer titles, Lord of the Rings, Battle for Middle-Earth 1 and 2 as well as the original 
Witcher game, the Witcher Enhanced Edition. That's the very first Witcher title. So a lot of people using AMD cards that updated to the adrenaline, adrenaline drivers last month were seeing crashes on these specific DirectX 9 titles. But as I said, AMD has now pushed out their alpha driver for this, known as 18.1.1, which is really just for this issue. It's not addressing anything else right now on this driver update. It's just the DirectX 9 crashing issue. So if you're not playing any of the games that they talked about, or if you're not experiencing any crashing on DirectX 9, there's really no reason to go race out and update your drivers right away with this alpha patch as it is just that, an alpha patch. It hasn't been fully tested yet by AMD. We will probably see a full WHQL driver probably in the next couple days to a week, I would have to presume. And once that becomes available, it's probably gonna be advisable for most Radeon users to go ahead and update their drivers. But for right now, if you're not having this issue with DirectX 9 games crashing, you're probably okay and you could just wait for the full release driver. But I'm gonna go ahead and get on out of here, guys. If you enjoyed this video or found it informative any, in, in, informative in any way, there we go, I stumbled over my words, I'm talking fast, I got an oil change in an hour. Leave me alone, okay? It's quick breaking my nuts. But as I said, I gotta get out of here. Uh, if you enjoyed this video or found it informative in any way, go ahead and leave a like on it down below or subscribe if you're not already. And if you have been here for a while, you could always hit that notification bell so you never miss any of the tech news uploads as soon as they go up here on the channel. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Tara. And by the way, I say Tara at the end of the videos. I've said this a couple times, but still, the questions are always coming through as no one ever has ever seen all my videos. I mean, some, maybe some of you have. I have like, like 800 uploads or something. It's, it's a lot of videos to have watched. But Tara is basically a Northern English slang, which kind of orig originates with the term Tata. So if you ever heard someone say Tata, like goodbye, uh, Tara is just a different pronunciation of that common in Northern England as well as Wales and it's something I picked up from hanging around online with friends from England and stuff and it's just it's just kind of stuck over the years on the channel so that's why I say Tara. Quick little history slash lesson. I don't, I don't know. I'm going. Or Tara as it were. <laughs>